better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, which just came out in theaters and is doing really, really well right now. I think Friday numbers have just come in and they're, you know, 40, 50 million range, something like that. So, this is good, looking like it might hit over $100 million opening weekend, which is amazing because I think this movie deserves it. And we're going to get into a non-spoiler review here, so don't worry, I'm not going to ruin anything for you. I might talk about some things that you've seen in some of the trailers and some of the TV spots, um, but I won't, I'll try not to dive too much into anything and keep it safe for you so you can just kind of hear my overall thoughts, which are positive. I have some criticism, but mostly positive. And then we'll get into a spoiler review later, and then there's a couple scenes in here that kind of help us, you know, minor spoilers, that kind of tie in to the greater theme of this channel and this show. And I want to get into those specifically. So I will have some videos that I'll, I'll, will pop up soon. I'll label as spoilers so you don't have to watch them if you don't want to. And you can watch them after the after you see the movie. But I'm telling you, go out and see Spider-Verse immediately. It's, it's really, really good. And we're going to dive into that right now. And I want to hear your thoughts down below. So obviously, click, you know, click the like button if you want, if you enjoy this video, um, and then let your thoughts be known down below in the comments, and we'll keep talking down there. We might even get into some spoilers in the comments, so I would warn everyone, maybe don't read the comments, uh, because uh, there might be some spoilers down there. But we will do a spoiler episode, so if you want to save your spoiler comments, we can do that in the spoiler episode for sure. Uh, but for now, non-spoilers. Let me just kind of give you a rundown of what I thought of this movie. Like, the first act... I thought was really strong. It, it you know brought you into another character. It, it doesn't start off with Miles. Uh, so again, I won't get into too many spoilers, but we are on another Earth when we start this movie. And that Earth is beautiful. I think I heard um, some of the actors who played characters in this world talk about this world being kind of a mood ring that uh, depending on one of the characters' uh, mood and, and what they're feeling in that moment, the colors and stuff will change around them. And that is exactly what I saw on screen. Um, there's like a watercolor effect at times. It matches a lot the comic book that it's based off of. And I don't want to show the artwork off because I don't want to spoil too much. But uh, the opening sequence is really great. And I think it's about 10 or 12 minutes long before you even get to the opening credits. And those are handled really well. I liked all the, the manipulation of um, all the logos, you know, from like uh, Lord Miller's logo to Pascal Pictures logo. Like they kind of manipulate all of them, like they're glitching out, like, you know, they're in the multiverse, like in the first movie. And that was really cool. And that's a theme in this movie because obviously now Miles is departs from his world and goes to the multiverse and each world he goes into, he's kind of having that glitching effect that everybody else had in the first film. So he knows by doing that, he's, uh, you know, he's on a ticking time clock and, uh, and that adds a little bit of tension at one point, but then there's a, a device that shows up that kind of takes that away for a while until once again, Miles loses that device and he's back in that situation where, where time is of the essence. So, um, yeah, a lot of really neat and clever stuff done in this movie. I thought it was very smart, like the first movie was, but it also a strong emphasis on the visuals, but not just to do that. Like, they did it, but they didn't skimp on the story. They didn't skimp on the characters. They didn't skimp on the voice acting. Uh, they didn't skimp on the music, for sure. Uh, Daniel Pemberton, who did the first film, I think still does some score stuff on this one, but also with Metro Boomin, who is an amazing artist, and he created some of the score and soundtrack for this movie, and, uh, and I think mainly in the soundtrack department produced it and did a great job. And I have the soundtrack now. Uh, I bought it uh, after work today and uh, was listening to it on the way home, and I loved it. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's get this video in here because I'm getting sluggish, I'm getting tired, and I know I'm going to be switching probably soon. Uh, normally, I don't last too long after work sometimes. So I figured, let's get this review uh, filmed, and I can edit it over the weekend and post it up for you guys as soon as possible. So uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I enjoyed the music of the movie. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the pacing of it even. There's some things I feel like could be trimmed or cut or could have been focused on a little bit more. Um, I like Jessica Drew as a character, but I would say my, so I had some criticisms for her, but she does kind of have an arc in this. So I'm, I think her story isn't done being told yet. She's just, she serves the purpose she's supposed to in this one. And I think she might have something more, you know, in the next film. And as you know, uh, for unless you don't know, there is a third Spider-Verse movie coming out. They announced that this one is part one of two. So they're essentially doing a trilogy. But they did, you know, most of this movie in the next one, which is called Beyond the Spider-Verse. And it comes out as of right now next March. So less than a year away. They've already kind of uh, planned out the story and everything. And, and they're just working on the visuals now for the next one to get it out on time. So they kind of worked on these two movies mostly together. 
and uh, and so there's a plan in place, and that's why it's really hard to say, you know, what you know what what I feel completely about certain characters that I'm critical on because they might have a, another chapter of their arc coming up in the next film. But I would say in this film, she's just you know Jessica Drew is the mentor of Gwen. But you don't really see her do a ton of mentoring. She's, it's just said that she's the mentor of Gwen. She does kind of side with Miguel. Miguel O'Hara in this is a departure from the comic books a little bit. Um, Miguel is always a little bit more harder edged in the comics. Not so much of a jokester, although had a few moments from time to time. Um, but he, he was a little bit more serious. He's a different than Peter Parker, obviously. And he is in this movie. But he has a mission, and he is a devout believer in this mission. And uh, because he has experienced something, and again, I won't go into details, that affected him and uh, placed a lot of that Spider-Man guilt uh, that onto him, because when he made a choice to do something uh, self selfish, I guess, a little selfish, bad things happen to other people because of it. And that's kind of the Spider-Man way sometimes, is that theme of, if I give in to the things I want, everyone else pays the price for it in some way. And so I can't have the things I want so I can be free to protect the people that I love. And that's kind of always been a theme in Spider-Man stories and comic books is about that you have the power and this is the responsibility that comes with it. And that's, it's a shame, you know, that that's the thing. But, and that's why Miles kind of doesn't subscribe to that. So that's the whole theme of this movie is that everyone believes, hey, we're spider people and tragedy follows us around. And that's just the way it goes. But out of that tragedy, good things can come of it too. And Miles is like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm a young kid and I'm naive, uh, but I don't think it has to be that black and white. And I don't see why all of you think it is that black and white. And so you have this kind of like, um, you know, spider versus spider get in story where you had, you know, superior Spider-Man thinking one way, the extreme way. And you had Miles on the other side being like, no, we're not going to do this. And, and, and kind of trying to do his own thing and, and prove himself uh, and then save people. You know, that's ultimately the goal of Spider-Man is to save people. And Miles, is re he's done really well. Like I said, the first act is not set in his world, but most of the second act or the first part of the second act or last half of the first act is. And it's him, you know, kind of seeing where he is in his life, you know, where he's struggling. Um, he misses Gwen a lot, definitely. He's had a big crush on her in the first movie. And she has feelings for him. And it's kind of a, a tennis match, you know, back and forth of, you know, who feels what for who at times. And, and there's mistakes made. And that's what I like is uh, sometimes in characters when they do this, especially with female characters, they, they want to make them, you know, a little bit um, closer to perfect. No one's ever perfect, obviously. But you sometimes it's like, hey, we don't want her to have too many flaws. We, we don't want to make too many mistakes or where you might dislike her for some reason. And they didn't do that in this one with Gwen. They actually make her make a few choices that you kind of don't agree with. And I like that they did that because it made me like the character more. And then it, it sets her up for a big growth. Uh, you know, this movie is not just Miles' story anymore. It's an ensemble. It's about wearing the mask. In the first movie, it was about, okay, I'm Miles. I'm not Peter Parker. Here's what I'm going to do with the mask. And I'm, I'm going to try to follow in his footsteps because he was a good man. And this Peter B. Parker person and Spider-Gwen and Spider-Man Noir and Penny Parker and Spider-Ham, they are all good individuals too. And, and they believe in this mission. And I believe in it now too. And it's it's time for me to prove that I'm worthy of this mask. Now that he's proven that, what do you do from there? Is it all sunshine and rainbows? No, of course not. There's struggles, personal struggles and superhero struggles. So yeah, there's villains from alternate universes that show up in the beginning. There's, uh, you know, Miles uh, interacting with the spot and, and meeting the spot who is starts off as a villain of the week kind of thing. And then that he feels insulted by being called that. So he starts searching for more power. He is someone that is connected to Miles and I won't get into all the details of that but he is out kind of for revenge in a way. And Miles tries to reason with him, tries to just talk to him and talk it out. But at that point, it's far too late. And, and uh, basically the spot is like, no, like the parasite from Superman or some other villains, like he's just out for more power so that he can get to a point where he's, he even believes he's not a villain of the week and he has enough power to destroy, um, you know, everything that Spider-Man stands for. And that's kind of what's building throughout the movie. And even when the spot's not around, even when Miles, like I said, he has, that is a problem in the movie. His relationship with Gwen is kind of a problem in the movie. His relationship with his parents kind of is a struggle in the movie. Even when those characters aren't on screen, their presence is felt because the point of Miles' journey is to really discover who he wants to be and how he wants to apply Spider-Man uh, to his life and how he wants to apply Miles to his life. 
and and stand for what he truly believes in because he has lost people. He lost his uncle. He watched Peter Parker die, and and why? And this movie answers those questions. Why? Peter Parker essentially died in the first movie. Um, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to theories I had when I watched the first movie because I noticed, and a lot of you probably did too, in the first movie, the spider that bites Miles had the number 42 on it and it kept glitching out. And I was like, okay, well, if everyone else glitches out, that must mean something, you know, about that spider. Well, this movie explores that too and gets into that. And that's kind of what the movie culminates to because you have this spot story then you have this story where Spider-Man's meeting all the Spider Society people and going to Mumbai, uh, which is really cool. It's like a Mumbai, a Manhattan kind of hybrid um, where you have uh, you know Spider-Man India there. That was a great sequence. I love the colors and everything in that sequence. Um, then you go to the 2099 universe. You stop into some other universes. Again, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but there's some really cool ones that I think a lot of people will like. Certainly ones we're going to talk about on the show in future episodes for sure. Um, and then uh, and then they're labeling each Earth. They're labeling each Spider-Man. Hobie Brown as Spider-Punk is amazing. Daniel Kaluuya is uh, so good as Hobie. As a Hobie Brown fan, all the way back to 2007, when me and my two friends wrote a Spider-Man 4 screenplay, you know, I, they, I put in my journal and it was like, yeah, I really pushed to have Hobie Brown in the story. I wanted uh, Hobie Brown to be someone that Peter Parker knew, to maybe set up the Prowler one day and everything like that. Well, this is an alternate universe, Hobie Brown, where he's Spider-Punk, but he was amazing. And I thought Daniel killed it. Every scene that he was in, he wasn't in it a lot, but when he was, I really loved it. I loved his animation with the punk pop art was really cool. Um, and playing the guitar, all this stuff, you know, being kind of a, uh, you know, non-apologetic for who he is, but being like against the system, but still joining the team of spider people and the, you know, kind of the juxtaposition there and kind of slight hypocrisy, but he points it out too. So he's aware of it. It's really fun. And then he has a great moment with Miles um, and with Gwen uh, where he's like, you know, you, you kind of see like, oh, maybe this guy's not really on our side in a way, but oh, maybe he is, you know, and maybe that was the point of him being here was to kind of be a, a wrench in the spokes of this spider society on some level. So there's a lot of fun they have with Hobie and I really love that. And as a Prowler fan and a Hobie fan and, a, you know, a fan of other characters that have been the Prowler and stuff, this movie overly satisfied me and i'll get into that in a spoiler video for sure but there's so much in here for a fan of the prowler like i am and uh, and i loved what this movie gave us and i love what this movie gave us as a spider-man fan you get so many different variations of spider-man obviously you see him in the trailers little work you know uh, editor's notes pop up when uh you know spider punk talks and and uh, cockney little subtitles pop up from the editor and like editor's note uh this means this and cock me or whatever and it, it's it's really well done it's very fast paced the two and a half hours went by really quickly and like i said you get your chunk at the beginning then you get your into your mile stuff and then the miles and gwen stuff and there's a natural growth i feel with this movie it, it's kind of written almost song like where it just has this nice you know ebb and flow to it at a certain point now there are some things like i said you could maybe trim things I'm a little critical of a couple characters I felt like could ex they could expand it on more or got rid of but I think we I got to see the rest of their story in the next one to really feel that way uh, or to to voice how I really feel uh, I have to see how their story ends first um, but at least in this one you know Jessica Drew I was a little critical of but I'm glad she was there it was cool to see her you know she her scene kicked a lot of butt where she came in and, and helped uh you know spider Gwen out and stuff and and Miguel um but then, like I said, you get into the Miles and Gwen stuff, then you go into the other universes, then you meet the Spider Society, and all while that's happening, you have, you know, Miles' parents and, and kind of the relationship there and what that's going through. You have um, Miguel struggling with, you know, not really struggling, thing, being very committed, but being so committed, he's starting to scare some of the people around him. There's a, a really cool thing called the, the go home machine or the back home machine, I think it was, which is cool because I'm like, well, home is a word that's in every Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. So that's a neat little maybe possible reference to that in a way. But there's a machine that's really scary and it's really cool looking uh, and it's called the back home machine. And the way Miles interacts with that and comes up with this plan, you know, because you see him in the trailer being chased around like what he needs to do to escape and stuff. It's very clever. And it's I think it's one of those things where like Peter Parker, a lot of people underestimate Miles uh, from fans sometimes, even me. Like, I'm not a big fan of some of the comic book stuff they've done with them. But the movie, I think, is the best. It's it's the potential. You know, like, I read some of those Bendis comics in the beginning. I'm like, okay, there's potential here for Miles. But he hasn't hit it yet. And in the comics, still, for me, he hasn't really hit that potential. But in these movies, he way exceeds. This is the best version 
possible, I think, of that character. And they do it so well. And Shamik Moore does a great job uh, voicing him. And he is. He's, he's a little wise beyond his years because look at his mentors. He had, you know, his father, his mother, his, his uncle, who even though his uncle was the prowler and was a bad guy, still looked out for Miles. And, and that plays a big part of the theme in this movie. And, and where a story, you know, different story beats lead is the people who inspired Miles. That, that's felt throughout the movie. And, and he gets to meet, in a way, uh, you know, a lot of his heroes and, and, and how you shouldn't always meet your heroes. And he gets disappointed. I mean, some characters do let him down in this. Characters that we love, you know, let him down. And, uh, but there's growth there. There's ch a chance for growth there and, and more stuff. And, you know, getting cool cameos like Mayday Parker, which is really cool. Uh, you know, I saw someone be like, oh, why does he, you know, hang around with this baby? Why is he bringing on missions? But it's like, dude, that's really for fans, fans of Mayday Parker. We get to see Mayday on film, you know, even though she's a baby. Um, but who knows, maybe in the next one, maybe we'll get to see her as an adult, you know, they'll hint at it or something. I don't know, but she's a, she's a great character and, and I definitely want to see more Mayday. But that's the thing is this movie is they didn't just put cameos in just to do it. I mean, yeah, sure. A little bit they did, but some of the cameos have lines of dialogue and, 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 and by familiar voices and stuff. And you're like, Oh my goodness, they're actually doing this. And, and, uh, and everyone, whatever world they're from, they stay true to their, style of animation i'll say it that way i really really enjoyed this movie from a i can't wait i own the art of the first movie the book and i cannot wait to buy the art of this one i mean there is so much that work that went into this and you see it it's one of those things where i always talk about film where you want to see every penny on screen this movie has every single penny spent on screen and that makes it amazing to me just unbelievably amazing and to have that and have all these cameos and to have a story that works that you know fits that things that even get complicated they find a way to just kind of condense and explain clearly uh to where it's it's not a hot mess it's like yeah and at, we're at this point where it's like oh man there's so many multiverse storylines but man oh man do i never get sick of seeing multiple spider people on screen together they did such a good job in No Way Home with that, and they continue that here, and they did a good job before that with Into the Spider-Verse, and I'm just loving this franchise. I, I really love what Sony's doing with Spider-Man the character, and I know people want to crap all over Sony for stuff, but they have a better track record of Spider-Man successes than failures, in my opinion, and uh, and for that reason, I can't wait for Beyond the Spider-Verse. So let me know your thoughts down below if you've seen this movie or if you haven't. Let me know when you're going to go see it because you really need to go see it. Uh, it, it. The ending is amazing. The, the beginning is amazing. Everything in the middle is amazing. I have some criticisms, but I have to get into spoilers to tell you some of them, so we'll save that. Miles is clearly someone who, by doing his thing, inspires others. And, uh, and because he's, he's, he's doing it with a pure heart. And I think that awakens a lot of people that are in his proximity, Hobie being one of the first ones in the film uh, to kind of feel that from Miles. Uh, they had every right to kind of be at odds with each other, uh, you know, and, and maybe a little standoffish with each other. And uh, in the end, Hobie, I think, earns, you know, he, Miles earns his respect and he's like, okay, kid, you're all right and I'm going to help you. And I like that. I thought that was awesome. So I think that's going to continue into the next movie. And we're going to see more people kind of see Miles' point of view. And uh, and because I don't think he's wrong. What they reveal in this movie about Miles and about why the Spider Society exists, there's there's one thing that doesn't make sense to me. And it involves Miles. Um, and I got to get into that in the spoilers. So uh, so that, what, that makes me think, okay, Miles you're doing the right thing here. Uh, I think he's doing the right thing. And uh, and so I'm rooting for him. So I can't wait, you know, go see this movie. I'm going to go see it a second time, probably even a third time. I have to see it again, definitely at least one more time. It's that good. And uh, and I recommend you go see it, as I've said a hundred times in this review. So yeah, I would say this movie, um, you know, I, I would say because I have some criticisms, I might be somewhere between an eight and a half and a nine. And that's kind of, I think, where I was around in the first movie. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's solid. I mean, it's really, really solid. And even some of my criticisms are nitpicks. So I wouldn't really count that against the movie. So I would say I'm probably about a nine out of 10 on this one or a, a four, uh, to four and a half out of five stars. Uh, that's how I normally rate things. And, and, and that shows you just how much I really enjoyed this. And I loved the first one and I was really, you know, hyped for this one, but I was also nervous that it might not live up to that hype. So I was trying to temper my expectations. But I, I couldn't. I couldn't bring my expectations down after I saw like the second or third trailer. And I didn't really watch a lot of the TV spots or anything. I wanted to go in a little bit fresh with this one. And uh, 
I think I had like one minor thing spoiled for me, but everything else I went in kind of clear on. And I'm glad I did because holy crap, there are so many cool surprises in this movie. If you're a fan of any Spider-Man movie, it's, it's, I think you're gonna have a good time. So with that being said, I think that's as spoilery as I can get. You guys take care, enjoy the movie, come back and uh, for our spoiler review and talk uh, in the comments there. But for now, if you want to say some non-spoiler stuff about anything I touched on in this episode, let it be known down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.